I uh, would just say welcome to the podcast, everybody. Happy Friday to you. Friday. Uh, we are financial advisors here at Jazz Wealth. We are 100% SEC registered fiduciary financial advisors. We manage almost. We're, get, we're getting to 400 million almost, but trying. Uh, Market's not wanting to play nice. Yeah, that, that, that helps there. We're one of the only financial advisors that, hey, we don't grow unless your account grows, period. Uh, we can't grow as a company. That's, uh, I think it's a fair way of doing business. And I'll just point this out here. One of the questions that I still get a lot, actually, even though, you know, things are slowing down out there. Uh, Eric, let's pretend I'm a client. I, I would like to, um, I'd like to start working on passive income, Eric. What, what, what do I do? Yep. Yep. That's a, that's a common one. It's a trendy with social media, passive income, very trendy. Well, yeah. And there's a few topics in there. Like they're always like real estate or Airbnb or tiny homes but or whatever. People don't realize that, you know, there's options for passive income just with investing. You could just put money in something to have passive income coming in through investments. Like um, traditional stock market. It, yeah. Investments. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to have passive income in real estate, there's work. It's not all passive. I've owned, you know, I got up to where I had a total of, I think, five rental properties at one point. Um, and it's work. Now I don't have the time for them and market's up and yeah. I'm out. <laughs> That's so, what you think uh, about it. Like, I don't have any more. You have like a full-time thing here that we're doing. Hey, Eric, why don't you have rental properties so you can generate some passive income? Because uh, it's not passive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of work there. And if you want passive income, you're going to pay a lot of your profits out to make it completely passive. And then still, you're still going to have some sort of work and liability that comes into play. Yep. So what do you tell a client? They say, look, I, I want, I'm, I'm interested in passive income. Where do I start? What do I do? Help me. What, let's do it. Yeah, it depends on what they're wanting. Uh, I mean, ultimately, everybody goes to real estate. So I know real estate. I can talk about the real estate side of it, but it's not, I always try to share just what I told you. I mean, you know, what, what are you looking for here with this? Yeah. Um, if you're looking for just, you know, some steady income, I mean, there's, there's funds that are out there right now that are- Or even short-term bonds, short-term yeah. treasuries and things. It's yeah. like- Yeah, it depends on what, what your goal is, how long you want this. Do you want it forever? What do you, what do you want? So- How much do you need? I, yeah, there's a lot of specific questions in there. And unfortunately, if you search like passive income online and stuff, you're going to get all the gurus and all that great stuff. Everything from like the drop shipping Amazon marketplace stuff, yeah. you know. The first thing you got to do, I think, is think of what's interesting to you because there's, it's not likely going to be truly passive, especially when you start generating more income from whatever this is. It should be interesting. You want to check in on it. You're like excited to see it happening. So make it something interesting to you. So for example, we have a client that is a passive investor in a funeral home that offers crematory services. He's okay. doing all right with that. Hmm. It's not okay. for me. So he's almost like a silent investor. So he is. doesn't have any control. He just put money in it and gets a Essentially, return. he helped the guy get up and running. And the goal for these people is they're going to get a few more of them up and running. Okay. And then to sell them to a major brand. Because I don't know if you know the funeral industry, but it's getting consolidated by the big brands really quick. But I've he doesn't heard care. heard that about dentist office, things like that. Veterinary yeah, yeah. offices, same concept. A lot of them are getting like almost like franchise now. Yep. There's a lot of big corporate companies coming in. Actually, the one right around the corner that we take my dog to on uh, Tuesdays looks like a small little thing, whatever. It's just this cute place. Everybody knows your name. Uh, if you look on the wall, it's owned by a company in California. It's a big, big brand. Yeah, I had some veterinary friends and that's what they were telling me. Like yeah. everything's very competitive out there. So he's a silent partner in this um, I don't know if it has a different name. It's a funeral home with crematory services. Okay. I don't know what, if that's called something. Anyways, uh, he's cool with that. And his thought is like, well, two things in life are guaranteed, right? You know? Yeah. So he's like a steady source. You know, he doesn't see anything weird about it or anything. I could probably get over it, like if I made enough from it. Um, but he's got a goal in mind. <laughs> get over it if you made enough from it. Yeah, I don't know. Money, you know what I mean? A that's a horrible way of thinking through it, but okay. Hey, $20 right. is $20, you know? Uh, okay. You know okay. the saying. Oh gosh, um, no. <laughs> so, but the thought here is he has a goal. So number one, he wants to be passive. He checks in on it because he gets to be a part of the finances and stuff. So he's interested in it, but the goal is that they're going to sell to a brand. So there's an end exit in yeah. mind. Yeah. Some people think his passive income is like getting out of a job. Uh, I want to stop my job, you know, uh, the client the other day said, well, Warren Buffett said you should have multiple sources of income. I just want to make sure I'm doing my part to try to do that. Um, 
that's the first thing, right? Got to be interesting to you. And what's the goal? What, what, what are we trying to do here? Yeah. Because um, I know in our area, we're very lucky that you could buy a house, rent it out and make something off of it. Maybe not the largest profit right now, but you can rent it and make a profit. I have no interest in that. I just don't want to do it. Yeah, I, you know? I just think that people think passive income and maybe it's a, a skewed conversation that's being pushed by social media because it's like almost everything with passive income has some sort of work behind it. So maybe it's like yeah. passive income is just separating from, you know, your general daily job or it's extra income. But yeah. I mean, cause I, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm really stuck on this passive income. I don't know the specific definition, but it's like, it just doesn't make sense to me that oh, I'm getting, he's fired up today. No, 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 just like I'm trying to, trying to figure out, you know, like what, what is passive income? Like, uh, you know, I mean, I, I that's, a, that's, you know, people are gonna be like, you idiot. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, you're an advisor. You don't know what passive income is. I get what passive income is, but I'm just trying to explain that almost everything creates some sort of work. Now you could buy into like a real estate syndicate, you know, and have some opportunities there. You're just parking your money. And yes, there is passive income there, but but most things that are talked about, like your general stuff is not yeah. all fully passive. Well, that would lead me to the second thing I think that you should think about. So number one, it's interesting and something you have a goal for. Um, whether it's, it could be leaving it to the kids or whatever. Uh, but number two would be, what's the trade-off here? It's passive income. If it's truly passive, someone's going to make a few dollars off of you. You're probably okay with that. But the government's also probably going to make a few dollars off of you as well. So are you okay with that? Will you be able to handle the, maybe the reporting difference on your taxes? And if you're setting up a separate company to do this, I mean, will, are you a part of that? You have to be engaged in the bookkeeping, in the filing of your taxes, extensions, yada, yada. Um, that's not necessarily passive, right? But, I, you know, that's something to consider there. I don't often care for the passive income side of things. For me, just from a time standpoint. But also, if I don't have a tax advantage there, I'm not interested. I don't want to do something to make some income and then I have to file more taxes. It would have to be a lot. So consider the tax side of things as well. And I think that, you know, what are you investing in this passive income? Do you truly need the extra income? Because if you don't need the extra income, what could you do investment wise in anything to allow that to grow? Because if it's passive income, oftentimes then it's not appreciating at the rate that, you know, if you put it, let's just give an example, you know, you build a dividend portfolio, you have passive income coming off of that in, div in the form of dividends, but the stocks that are in those dividend portfolios don't generally appreciate like growth stocks. Yep. So what are you giving up? If you don't need the income, maybe rewire your brain to say, hey, I don't need the income. Let's not focus on the passive now. Build this large nest egg so that then later on you shift to the passive. That's uh, so I'm actually I'd like to stop on that. Let's make that part of the focus here, because from experience. I have younger clients that that get excited about passive income and truly passive income in this case would be a dividend portfolio. Yeah, you don't have to look at it. They're just going to pay the dividend. Yep. You have the taxes, of course, you got to turn in your 1099, but that's minimal, you know. So, but the problem is a client will say, I'm going to start a passive income account. I'm going to put a couple thousand dollars into it and I'm a dollar cost average. I'm going to build this thing up. Okay, I'm with you. I see where you're going and I want to applaud that, but why don't we go with like a growth type investment now, squeeze out that extra three, four, five percent. And then when it hits a target, keep dollar cost averaging, when it hits a target, okay, then we shift, right? That. Yep. Yeah. If you're taking your dividends and you're actually dispersing them out as income, you, you, you're you not dividend reinvesting. Yeah. That in itself is going to get you because, you know, it's like, yeah, it's, uh, it's, you're not growing the nest egg, but I don't know. Everybody has their arguments on it and different different thoughts. But yeah, passive income is a, a big topic out there. Yeah. A lot of people like to talk about it. I like it. Are, are you okay? I'm solid, man. You feeling good? Okay. Yeah, I'm solid. I brought him down with the passive income thing. Did I? Did you? It just sounds like you? you're, just, you're just like, ah, oh, oh, screw it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I don't mean that at all. Don't um, mean that at all. Okay, so. I got fired up. I did a, a video earlier, so I, I got fired up on it. Maybe oh. that's why I'm still like, I'll talk you, about it in a little bit. Do you want to talk about it? In a little bit. Go ahead, please. I, I'm done. I would like. I would like to hear. Oh yeah. I like when he gets upset. <laughs> uh, well, well. So, so the idea of like trying to catch mistakes before they happen. Yes. And you know, there's there's just too many people that are out there that are they truly believe in something, but they're not always doing it. It's you can wire your brain to believe something is right but it's not truly right. 
Are we talking Democrats? <laughs> oh, gosh. We are not talking I didn't know. politics. I was we are not talking 50 -50. politics. 50-50. I was like, who am I going to pick here? But he's, he's doing it there. Or it could be Republicans. It could go either way. I'm not, not, we're not talking politics. I just thought that was... We don't do that. We stick finances here at Jazz. <laughs> okay. Um, no, the, the argument I have is, is all along the lines of this, you know, tax strategy selling point of a whole life policy. Yeah, just say and it, man. I Come just up. did, I just did a video on it. You can see me get fired up. Uh, check it out. It was Wednesday. I'm going to do a little follow up on some things on Monday, but, um, but yeah, I had a client who was basically, he watched, he, he listened to some podcasts. He watched this video. There's a guy who's out there right now. Yeah. Um, it know, shows up on my very popular. What's it? Uh, uh, Instagram reels where you do that. It shows like as you're going, it'll occasionally show you this person's live. It's yeah. those people. I know exactly yep. what you're talking about. Yeah. And, and I just, I think that selling something on the tax strategy, first of all, that speak, that piques people's interest, um, selling on the idea of not only tax strategy, but legacy. People always want to leave a legacy to their kids. Yep. Piques their interest. So you get them in the door and you pitch this whole thing. But if you break down the numbers, like I did in the video on Wednesday, it's horrible. And I, I, I literally called it a scam and I said it should be illegal. And that's how frustrated I get with it on the way it's presented. Life insurance is life insurance. And if you're using it as a different type of strategy, other than that, I'll argue it all day. And I've yet to have anybody prove to me something yep. as to, hey, no, here's how it's dollar for dollars. But people are gonna be like, well, it's not an, it's not an investment, but it's sold as an investment. It's sold as something to borrow against. Yep. And, and how you can borrow against it and be your own bank and do all these things. You can do all this with a, with a brokerage account all day long. With, with no, no cost. Oh, all the interest. But. Well, you're going to have the interest, but you're going to have better returns long term. Yep. There's no insurance cost. If you want insurance, go buy the term insurance and be done with it. This is unfortunately what he's talking about. It's a product that relies on people not being good at math. And it's complex math, I'll give you that. But it's sold on the summary of what it can provide and gets you excited. And I may try to do this because I told you I have a friend, long, long lost friend from high school that I found out works at Franklin Templeton. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, well, wow, we do the same thing. Well, he's actually going to be in town on Sunday. And as he, so the reason we're going to talk is he was asking what we do versus what he does. And he's like, I have a sneaking feeling, man, that, that, that what I'm doing is, is not the best thing to do. He's doing what you're talking about. Like part of it anyways. Okay. So part of their service is these policies. And he's like, I understand it and see how it helps people. But I don't actually think I understand what's going on. Right? He gets a commission and all that stuff for selling it. So he's like, I just want to, I think I need to know more about this. It's now starting to hit him where he's like, I'm not totally sure I'm doing the right thing. Hmm. Yeah. The company I started with was an insurance company and I quickly exited out, but it allowed me to learn enough to figure this out. And there was literally meetings we would have with our region where people would all come together for a certain area and talk about strategy. And they would always have the, the veteran guys talking about, you know, they would use universal life policies okay. and basically talk about how you would overfund it in the beginning. And then they'd say, you'd slam the door shut. Basically you drop the, the value of the death benefit way down. Okay. So then it produces this push out of, of money and it's a fixed interest rate. The okay. problem with it is, is I met with, you know, I think I've shared this before, but I've met with some uh, people when I started, they'd given me just a few little small book of clients to follow up with. And um, I met with these people and they're in their 80s and they had been sold a universal life policy based on a certain interest rate, but the interest rate had changed and went way lower just because, mm. you know, we've been in a really low interest rate time. So it paid the guaranteed amount versus what it was originally modeled at. Mm. And they, they were basically going to be out all of their money on this universal policy. So same concept here. They're selling this on, ah, oh, well, you're getting this interest rate, yep. but what happens when interest rates fall? There's never a, 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 a guarantee on what they're actually showing you. You look at the non-guarantee side, you never buy any of that stuff. Yep. And, you know, as advisors, yeah, we have to tell you, you know, hey, the market's going to fluctuate. Things are going to happen, but the, it's just. They can yeah. use hypothetical performance because it's a contract, not an investment. Yeah. Oh, there's, oh, and there's a disclosure in there that they have to sign on that illustration saying that this is hypothetical. You should be, you can request a lower, I forgot to show that on the video, actually. Ah, it was really interesting. Another video. You do another one. <laughs> another I, one. The sad part for me is, so that's not really my wheelhouse, but I have more and more clients that as I go through the planning with them, I say, okay, well, you have any insurance? Let's put this in here. And they're like, ah, I got this stinking policy. 
Yeah. Nobody ever says, dude, check this out. This is what I have. I'm excited. Once you're in it, everybody seems to sour real quick. So yeah, that's what they start asking me. You know, is it worth staying in or not? And and yep. that's a that's a tough one. And it's nothing against anybody who's bought into anything. You've been you've bought something. Hey, whatever the case is. But now, does it make sense or not to get out? Because there is a break even point in some of these policies, and sometimes it's like, what do you need it for? You know, I mean, I it's it was a learning experience for me because I mean, you know, to start out in the financial industry, it was almost a brainwash. People were pushing that, pushing that, pushing yeah. that, and. Um, I used to tease clients because they would say, I'm going to talk to this person at these companies about an insurance policy. And I said, great. What do you buy? What do you want? Well, I'm worried about maybe some insurance. If something happens to me, I've got three kids and a family and everything. And maybe that will, maybe they go to college. I'm willing to pay something every month so that they can go to get a policy to uh, pay out to go to college. I go, okay, just keep that in mind. Like when you go in there, you want a term policy. That, that's essentially all it is. Yep. And I said, watch what happens. You go in there and you're going to go down this path of like, dude, I could borrow. I could do all this stuff. It's like going to a car dealership and saying, I'll take the black truck. And the guy's trying to sell you the blue Nissan. And you're like, okay, I'll take that one. Well, no, I want the black truck. <laughs> Just yep. focus. Focus, focus. Um, one of the things that bothered me was uh, I noticed that Billy Joel's uh, clothes wouldn't dry. Why, why wouldn't Billy Joel's clothes dry? Because he, he didn't start the dryer. <laughs> that's right up there wow some that's for the older folk in there man wow. remember that song no mm -mm. yeah I, I i i get what you're saying there i need to go back to the to my no jokes. no no I, my jokes are good well I, I i there's a problem around here though like we've had some some theft here at the office oh and uh to whoever stole my copy of microsoft office i will find you you have my word uh yeah. I was mugged by six dwarves the other day. Not happy. Oh, okay. It took me a second <laughs> on that one. I was like, okay, okay. Think through this. Yeah, there you go. That one got me too. I, I heard it and I was like, well, I wouldn't be happy either. You just got robbed. <laughs> like, yeah. And then it for a minute, oh, yeah. <laughs> Dummy. Okay. Well, hey, rat, we'll wrap it up there. Enjoy the uh, rest of your weekend there. Let us know what you think in the comments below about everything we talked about here today would you have anything else you'd like to offer or add no no i actually just saw a comment on one of my videos one of your videos that said hey where'd the guy with four fingers go <laughs> <laughs> what that's terrific oh man well it's not me so so yeah well all right all that's right. it adios adios